Funkin' Talks, we present the controversies of the Pledge of Allegiance. We promote the ever so lovely Scholar Bowl and delve into yet another controversy. This time, global warming. All this right I now. Let's go. Man, man. Let's go. Let's go. I'm Lucas Mercer and I'm Jeffrey Rooks quick announcement if any of you students are unsatisfied with your photos taken prior to today do not fret there are picture retakes being conducted November 9th seniors if you have not gotten your picture taken at RPG studios November 9th I mean November November 9th will be your one opportunity to be included in this year's yearbook in our first story we present a very serious and political and controversial topic a little too big to ignore the Pledge of Allegiance. After the schools told us to start reciting the pledge every morning this year, Sutton Ward decided to look into the reason why. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible. This year, a new law was put into place that every school in the state of Missouri must recite the Pledge of Allegiance in at least one of its classes. It must be recited no less than once per school day. Students were given the chance to voice their opinion on the new law, starting out with saying why they do or do not stand. I don't stand because I feel like it's not really, I feel like it's not really necessary to stand. Like, it's, I get that it's really respectful to our country and to the people who fight for our country, but at the same time, I feel like it's not that big of a deal. Like, if I don't stand, I shouldn't be hated for it. I stand for the Pledge of Allegiance because it's respectful, and I want to make America great again. I don't stand because I feel like we should not be forced to stand. Freedom of speech is an American right, so therefore, I don't have to stand. Next, we ask students if they think that we should be forced to stand for the Pledge of Allegiance every day. I mean, they don't need to be forced to do it, but I mean, it's the right thing to do because like some of my classes, I have people not to do it. But if you come to America, you're kind of supposed to like learn our, you know, traditions and do what we kind of do. It's like, I don't, yes and no, because like it's respectful to our country, yeah, but I feel like we shouldn't have to say it every day. Like we have holidays for like respecting our country and stuff like that. Finally, we talked to Miss Lee about her opinion on reciting the Pledge of Allegiance every day. Yes, I think it's important that you should stand during the Pledge of Allegiance because it's honoring your, your country and it's showing that you have respect for it. Um, in Cafe A, though, we do not have a flag currently. Um, due to the remodel, possibly, they haven't hung a bracket for one. And so we don't have anything to pledge to. And then um, the speaker is not in Cafe A, so sometimes it's really hard to actually hear. As a student or a teacher, it is your right to do whatever you want as an American citizen. Stand or not, it is your choice. In our second story, there's a little something something we'd like to share called Scholar Bowl. Warren is here to tell you how to put your knowledge to the test. When the Tonka Scholar Bowl is hosting a trivia night here at Tonka in the library, if you think you got the brain power to win, then come sign up for $5 for your student or staff, $8 for adults, and if you want to bring a whole squad of eight people, it'd be $50. We're going to lose you to be helping out a fundraiser, and they got snacks on deck. So come through on Friday, November 11th at 6.30 to 9 p.m. Big brains, big rewards, fellas. We have yet again another touchy subject. That subject, climate change or as it is also known, global warming. As we've noticed, temperatures are rising. Winters are turning into summers. We send Layla out to present the information she has collected thus far. Global surface temperatures in Arctic ice extent have broken numerous records through the first half of 2016. According to scientists at NASA, the six month period from January to June was the planet's warmest half year on record. But doesn't the climate always change? What exactly is climate change? Here's Ms. Marcantonio with more information. Global warming is actually not the term that they use anymore. They use climate change because the impact that's going on with the fossil fuels and hurting the um, ozone layer and all that is actually a larger phenomenon. So climate change can mean everything from, from global warming to also like the increase in the storms and the um, rising 
temperatures of, this, of the waters of the oceans and things like that are all due to climate change. With this information, many people still choose to ignore the issue. I asked teachers their opinion on climate change. I feel like it's pretty painfully obvious that um, we're having some sort of effect on the climate around us and we're not really doing anything to stop it, so it's also painfully obvious that we don't care and that's a problem. I think um, it's something that we kind of look over um, because it's not, we don't feel like it's actively affecting us, but it really is. It's like. Um, we have different types of winters and we have different uh, seasons and the salinity is changing in the ocean. I mean, it's a, it's a pretty big deal. Is it happening? The answer has got to be yes. You take a thermometer out, stick it in the ocean, the ocean's getting warmer. And that's global warming. It's definitely happening. Um, almost every single scientist in the world that's credible at all believes that there's climate change going on. I remember growing up as a kid, the winters were colder. I think about in the 70s and in the 80s, every January, we would have a big snow. The reason for the type of climate change, I don't know. It could be human activity. I know we put a lot of pollutants in the air. Also, it could be just a natural phenomenon. Why might climate change affect us and the planet? And what can be done for a change? Probably there's not enough being done. I think that everyone's really worried about short-term uh, things, and I think that it's probably one of the largest uh, concerns that I have long term. Um, until America is free from its dependence on fossil fuels, whether foreign or domestic, it doesn't really matter. But until we're willing to put our research and development money into alternative energy sources, um, you know, we're going to have a problem. What we can do at this point is that we can try and mitigate uh, the damages, oh, which is kind of scary. Uh, so yeah, this is something that's going to be with us our whole lives and beyond just our lives, you know, our children's lives and our grandchildren's lives. From 1950 to present day, the world population has left 2 billion and is now at 7.5 billion. We got way too many people on this planet, way too many people that are burning more fuel, more energy, and the population of this world in your lifetime, in your lifetime, is going to hit, I'll even say 10 years from now, will be 9 billion people. And you know what? If you can't trace it to the population on this planet, you haven't got a clue. This is all we are presenting, but remember, if you want to know more, please make sure to research information. And if you do, make sure said information is credible and supported by evidence. That's it for this week's episode. I'm Jeffrey Rooks. And I'm Lucas Mercer. We'll, we'll see, see you next, next week on Tonka Talks. Talks. Check out found that's in the yard, that's for the south. Too complex for the rest of the I ain't nothing like y'all read about. Huh? Now settle down, let me turn my head around. Cause my comfort's so behind me, I can't see them through my view.